to deal with the Mandela effect. Let me explain what that is. Nelson Mandela spent uh, decades in prison in South Africa for uh, sedition to try to overthrow the government. And uh, while he was in there, uh, he died, according to some people. They thought Nelson Mandela died in prison. But the fact of the matter is that he did not die in prison. He came out of prison and became the, and became the president of the South African Republic. And he was the leader of the ANC. And if you want to read a good book on that, Randy Pike has got a book on the history of communism in South Africa. And it's an outstanding book. And I've read a good bit of material in it. And Brother Pike spent decades down there in South Africa and knows what he's talking about. But in any event, when you talk to people about Nelson Mandela, a lot of them think, well, he died in prison because it's implanted in their memory. It's like the picture that you see of the, of the lion and the lamb. See, it's implanted in their memory. But it's not, re it's not a reality. It's not true. He did not die. But that's the Mandela effect. It's the idea that you have something so ingrained in your mind that you see, you, 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 you can't see it any other way. And if when, you're, when you're presented with, with indisputable evidence that what you believe is wrong, then you've got a problem with that. It blows your mind away. And this is what's happening with it. Now, I'm going to take Isaiah 11. There's other passages they like to use, and there's other things. The Berenstain Bears, the Berenstain Bears, and all this other stuff. But the only thing that concerns me is the Scripture, because this is a direct assault on the authority of the Bible, folks. If they can get you to believe that at CERN, Switzerland, they have, they have opened up access to a parallel universe, and by opening access to a parallel universe, they're able to travel in time and go back and change the Bible that you've got in your hand, then they'll cause you to lose faith in the Scripture. And, of course, there is no absolute, there's no proof, proof at all they did. But here's the point. You have seen so many paintings of a lion and a lamb. So many of them, a lion and a lamb. That you believe that the Bible says in Isaiah chapter number 11 and verse 6 that the lion shall lie down with a lamb. And a lot of people believe that. But when you take it and read it in your Bible, it says wolf lies down with a lamb. Then you come along and you say, see where they changed that? They've changed that. And a lot of Christians, no doubt good Christian people, and I don't question their love for the Lord, believe that they have altered your Bible. And when you do that, then, of course, you've assaulted your faith. Now, as I told you, Brian Rowland the other day had the state of mind to look up the Dead Sea Scrolls because he knew that a 57-foot-long copy of Isaiah was found with the Dead Sea Scrolls that dates to about 300 B.C. That's only 400 years removed from the original autograph, see? And guess what he found? Wolf lies down with a lamb. So, you know, pray for these people and discard that as a bunch of psyops where they're messing with your mind. But what it is is a frontal assault, frontal now, frontal, head-on, against your Bible. And another element that creates so much confusion in this is all of these translations that are proliferating by the day. And so you've got to keep in mind that the Bible that you hold in your hands, and I hope you've got, as the old folks up in the mountains said, a real Bible. <laughs> they said, give us a real Bible. So what are you talking about? A King James Bible. <laughs> That was a real Bible to them. So if you've got a real Bible in your hands, it says wolf lies down with a lamb, and it is God's inspired word. But the point, the greater point of all of this, is that they're messing with your mind. Now, how many ever heard of Pokemon on the go or Pokemon Go? Now, this is like wildfire. And honestly, I hadn't heard anything about it a week ago. I've just been tied up in so many other things. But I've just spent a little bit of time the past few days, and here's what's happened. Nintendo, that created Pokemon about 20, 30 years ago, whenever it came out, was just an innocuous, innocent little game that they played on computers and what have you. A little speck moving around on the screen. But since then, this thing has morphed into a, a virtual reality, a world of virtual reality that is connected with ground-positioning satellites 
Therefore, it knows where you are, and it's leading you to a certain place that this Pokemon, which represents an avatar, a demon, whatever you want to make it represent, one of them had Hillary Clinton on there, so, you know, they're chasing her around. <laughs> I mean, you can put whatever you want to on there. <laughs> Why anybody want to do that's beyond me, but, but anyway, the idea is that you're living in this, this, in this virtual reality, and you are glued to this screen because this thing has captured your attention. And, and not, it's not that you're watching something in a static sense that it's right here before you and it's doing this. This thing's leading you somewhere. It's moving. You're trying to catch it. And so you're, and it's, and it's showing you it's over here in this graveyard. Now it's in this, in this, in this IBM building and it's, it's over here and it's over there. And so you're following this thing and the idea is to catch it. And people have walked off the cliff, people have wrecked their cars, people have walked out in front of automobiles, people have completely lost it, people are meeting now, conjugating, coming together by the hundreds in one location because they've been led in there. And the bottom line is that they are using that, I believe, to, it's like a test to see how brainwashed the American public and the public of the world finally, if you're finally at that point now where they can just lead you along. All they have to do is create some little, some little sparkler in front of you and get your attention because the whole culture is as shallow as it can be and lead you along. You live in a culture today that is far more interested in how you smile at them as to what you believe. The church is 50 miles long and a quarter of an inch deep, however way you want to say it. And that's the problem. But that also showcases what's going on here today, that this virtual reality, a world of virtual reality can take you deeper than you ever wanted to go and implant things in your mind that you never wanted to be put there. And the first thing you know, you'll be on the Internet, like I read from so many of these people, where they write in and say, I'm addicted to Pokemon on the go. I'm 37 years old. I'm a mother of two children. I had never had any idea that something like this could grab me. And she says, I'm addicted to Pokemon on the go. And she's not alone. So what you've got here now is this high-tech generation, high-tech. They give you a couple of generations to get accustomed to it. and You're using it as part of your daily life. And now they're beginning to manipulate you with it and control you with it. And that's what's going on with Pokemon on the go. Be careful of any virtual reality. You know what I'm talking about? These glasses these people put on and they're, and they're literally in a different world and the, they're in the world that their brain is seeing now, not that their five senses are sensing. It's this and, and, and they're controlling people. So be careful with that. Get away from it. Stay away from it. And it's only one form of many different types of games today that deal with virtual reality and GPS use, that use a GPS to control you and move you around to different places. So stay away from it. It's as dangerous as a Ouija board. So what's a Ouija board? A Ouija board is an instrument that's been around for a long time where they sit down in a little group and they ask this thing questions and it answers them and blows their mind. And in the process of innocently playing with a Ouija board, they can become demon possessed. Demons are real, folks. Don't let the folks down at the mainstream Protestant churches mess your mind up. Evil spirits and demons are real. So I don't believe they are. Then you think the Lord Jesus Christ is insane. Because when he was here 2,000 years ago, he spoke directly to them. And there's no way you can deal with that unless you accept the fact that evil spirits are real. It's like the canary in the cave. You put the canary out there and you're waiting for the poison to kill the canary. So the canary becomes a bellwether. It becomes a mark. It becomes something that you can judge and gauge the, the surrounding and the environment with. Stuff like this is let out to people. It's given out to people. It's put out among the populace so that they can measure how far you've come. And if you get millions of people to swallow, then you've got a bunch of people that are completely biblically illiterate. They don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, and they're ready for anything. So that's where we are. These people are smart that we're dealing with, folks. Remember, they said, uh, one, one of them put it this way, and I thought it was pretty, I forget who it was said this, but he said, keep their bellies full and their heads empty. <laughs> and that's what they're doing. The heads are empty, but the belly's full. They're happy. They're comfortable. And as long as they're happy and they're comfortable and they don't have any 
they don't have you know they don't they don't have anything really eating them up. Well, they it doesn't matter what goes on. They just they're just just like like sheep out here just grazing around, and they don't have a clue that the slaughter mill is right over the hill, and they're all and they're all just headed in that direction. That's that's and an awful lot of people are like the the Titanic is going down, and the band is playing nearer my God to Thee, which was a wonderful marvelous thing of courage. And grace. Did you all know that? Now I'm not talking about the movie. I didn't see the movie. I'm talking about reality. The Titanic goes down and the band is playing nearer my God to thee. Can you imagine people on board on the deck of that ship, the top deck of that ship, arranging the furniture while the ship's going down? That's what a lot of people are doing. They don't have a clue that the ship's going down. They're coming to their churches every Sunday. They're singing their little songs and having their little fellowship. And they're feeling good about their religion. And they've got their bellies full and their heads empty. And the whole country's going to hell just like that around them. deal with the Mandela effect. Let me explain what that is.